Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Just wanted to do a, uh, a quick video by way of an update on where I'm getting to with regards to the RF power amplifier. Um, I'm going to be in and out of, uh, of home quite a bit over the next month or so with uh, various trips. So I thought I'd just sort of catch up now and then uh, hopefully when I get uh, back in between trips I'll have a, uh, a bit of a chance to, to, uh, to, to work some more on it. Anyway, I just want to give a shout out to um, to Mike Cossa, uh, WA2EBY. Um, this amplifier here is pretty well exactly what he came up with back in 1999. It was in, I understand, the March QST magazine. I removed a few bits off here because I'm not trying to make this um, as wide band um, as he did to cover all of the, the hand bands. So, um, Essentially, it's going to be uh, around two IRF 510s. Um, I haven't used those with, with too much success before, so I really do want to have a bit of a, uh, a quiet um, go of those and just see if I can make them work. It's going to be in a push-pull arrangement. Um, so sort of just very quickly looking at it, uh, over here we'll have uh, T1. Um, that's going to split our incoming um, uh, signal from the driver amplifier, which I'll design once I've got this up and running. Um, so that's going to be bi file around, uh, and we'll look at the, the specs on that shortly to give us our two anti phase signals. Uh, a couple of ice, uh, DC isolation um, capacitors there, so they'll be 0.1 microfarads, um, which will allow us then on, the, uh, on this side here to adjust um, the biasing on those gates. Um, we'll look at the biasing in a sec. Uh, the output of the two IRF 510s uh, will then be reconstructed with T3. Um, as well as giving some impedance matching for our 50 ohm load on this side uh, back through to uh, the drains of the two RF 510s. Um, so just moving back to the gates, I'm going to have a couple of Zener diodes there. Um, from the spec sheet, uh, the maximum, and we'll look at those again over the page, uh, the maximum voltage on the gate with respect to the source uh, is plus or minus 20 volts. So I'm just going to throw in there for some protection a couple of 18 volt Zeners, uh, just in case the driver, for whatever reason, um, has a bit of a hiccup and overdrives that. And the biasing itself, um, going to have 13.8 uh, volts on this. Um, I was toying with the idea of using an old uh, laptop power supply. I've um, got a couple in the house which are up around that sort of 19 volts. Uh, but the two I had, uh, one was at 2 amps, one was at 3.5 amps. Um, so not quite where I want it to be, so I think for now I'll just go back and just play around with 13.8 volts uh, and see what the circuit spits out. But uh, getting back to the bias over here, um, we use a 7805 to drop that 13.8 volts down to 5 volts, and then those that 5 volts is going to be sitting on um, over top of a, a 10k ohm trim pot, so one for each side, and then basically just adjusting that uh, trim pot voltage to present um, a bias on the gate and then looking to um, set the quiescent current through the RF510 around 50 milliamps. Um, I've seen quite a range with, with others online using this particular device ranging from 10 milliamps through to in some cases 150 odd milliamps. Um, I think I'm just going to play it sort of safe at the moment and just use uh, say 50 milliamps and play, play around from there. Uh, 27 ohm resistor here seems to be quite a common value um, used to to present uh, to our driver stage as well as to the um, to the gate there. So we use a 20, uh, 27 ohm resistor there, uh, and then coupled AC to earth through that 0.1 microfarad capacitor there. Um, like I say, the output will be uh, reconstructed in terms of the two halves of the waveform using T3, and we'll look at the specs of that in a sec. Uh, in terms of providing our VCC to the two uh, drains. Um, that'll be through here a, another bifile wound uh, um, toy roy transformer here um, which will allow us then to provide that 13.8 volts to the drain uh, without um, having that ACE of the RF uh, being sucked to earth and then just decoupled through another 0.1 microfarad capacitor on either side. So again um, the specs from the spec sheets uh, talks about a uh, drain source maximum voltage of 100 volts. Uh, we talked about VGS, so the uh, the gate to source being uh, no more than plus or minus 20 volts, and then a max current through at a 5.6 amps. 
um, and I want to I want to have this sort of um, just over or around that sort of 10 watts for now so that'd be nice uh, so looking at the, the, the transformers uh, so the in, input transformer that does the phase splitting uh, that'll be a 10 turn uh, bifolar wound um, number 24 gauge and we'll put that on to one uh, FT50-43 toy word there um, T2 that's the uh, that's the one in the collectors, it's not the collectors, sorry, in the uh, the drains uh, providing our VCC. Uh, again, it'll also be 10 bifolar turns of number 24 gauge, and that'll be on a, uh, a stacked FT 50-43, so we'll use, use two of those um, stacked up. Now T3, that's the one that's uh, reconstructing uh, our waveform and doing the impedance matching. Um, I don't have any large binocular core or free large binocular core um, toyroids um, in the house. So what I'm going to do, I think, and I've seen this used elsewhere, is use some stacked um, some stacked T50-43s, and I'm going to have them sitting like that. So two on either side, um, and I think that's probably going to be about right. Oops. Um, I do have, if I can just get it out. Yeah, the problem with using, say, the um, the BN43-202, that's this one here, um, it's just the hole size here is going to be a little too small. Um, and we'll see the, the turns ratio in a sec, but uh, I think that's just going to be too small to try and stuff all the wires through. So by using this, hopefully I'll, I'll get um, a, a greater diameter there, um, as well as get the uh, the right impedance uh, motion going. So anyway, so just looking at our um, trying to get uh, the right impedance for the um, for the drains. So our output impedance uh, for this configuration should be VCC squared over two times the power out. So uh, just reiterating, using 13.8 volts, so 13.8 squared over two times 10 watts. So we want to be presenting um, no more, so something just a bit less than or equal to nine and a half ohms um, across those two um, across those two. Uh, drains. So I'm going to make the primary in line with uh, what um, Mike did in his original design and have uh, two turns. Um, so then just looking at the turns ratio, uh, if I was to use say six turns then I'd be impedance matching our 50 ohm load down to five and a half ohms which certainly meets our criteria which is good and then just plugging that into our Z out formula up here but just rearranging to, to determine what power out would be for five and a half ohms. So 13.8 squared over two times 5.5 ohms would give us 17 watts. Um, and for interest sake, what about then for say two turns to five turns? So that would be 50 ohms would give us um, eight ohms. And then repeating the same um, formulas before to determine what our power out would be would give us 12 watts. So I'm going to run with 12 volts, it's a little bit sort of closer to where I want to be. Um, so that's what I'm going to play with. So I'm going to play with a, a um, an output transformer of two turns to five turns, like I say, using four of these uh, for a start, uh, FT40-53s. Um, I've got a, a US trip coming up shortly, so I'm going to order some parts from um, kitsandparts.com and I'll get some of the really big uh, binocular toys. But for now, uh, that's what I'm going to play with. Um, we talked about uh, the Zener diodes uh, across the, the gates, so I'll just try 18 volt Zeners for that. Um, and then I've just sort of mentioned down here, I'm going to set, um, what, what I want to do is I want to build the amplifier first, do some trials uh, using the signal generator, and then work out what our input's going to be or needs to be to present or to produce more the point that 12 watts is an output, and then I'll uh, design the driver to, to meet those criteria. And as I mentioned before, um, setting those two 10k trim pots on the gates, the gate bias there to, uh, to hopefully get around that sort of 50 milliamps, uh, milliamps uh, quiescent drain current uh, with no signal applied. Now this time um, I am not going to use a uh, strip board. Um, I'm going to use this copper clad board here. Um, I think I'll probably just do dead bug style for a start, so I'll cut some of this down and, and glue, glue it over top to create some tracks, uh, just to get the, um, the configuration right, uh, and then probably look to 
uh, milled it up on a little miller, milling machine and actually make the tracks properly. So just sort of toying around with a couple of ideas there of, of what the orientation will be. And I think I'll probably sit on, settle on this one here. So this is the here of this board. Um, I'm sort of kind of thinking that uh, our input transform will come through here. So these little pads here will just be copper islands uh, on top of this board here. Um, our coupling capacitor input to what will be the, the gate line here. Here goes our 27 ohm resistor, a variable resistor there coming off the 5 volt rail. Um, in and around here will be the, the two IRF 510s with some big heat sinks. Um, and then their drain, their drain lines here. So again, in the middle here will be the, uh, the VCC, so 13.8 uh, volts coming up. Um, with the two essentially RF chokes going to those and the decoupling. Um, and then the output transformer coming across here. Um, I'm not sure uh, how much of an effect that's going to be on that, or having such the, the, the power here sitting reasonably close to this, but hey, we'll give it a go and see what happens. And then down the bottom will be a 13.8 line with its decoupling capacitors. Uh, there'll be 100 microfarads at least, uh, and a um, 100 nanofarads, 0.1 mic. Um, and uh, a 7805 that will drop that 13.8 down to 5 volts. Um, so that's the plan, either a 5 volt link around here, or maybe even um, if we can move this sort of in, in a bit, we can extend this sort of down the side of the board, and we'll have one 5 volt line all the way along here and push it inland. Anyways, so that's what I'm currently thinking. Um, and like I say, hopefully uh, in between trips I'll we'll have a bit of a chance to... Uh, to, uh, to wire it up and hopefully um, not blow too many of these things up because um, you'll see some various graphs online of how these things sort of tend to work and uh, you know, you'd be um, increasing your, uh, your your bias voltage and then suddenly it's a, a very steep up to uh, kaboom I think was one of the, uh, the graphs I saw um, and I've certainly experienced that before uh, in fact, one of those for the military guys turned into a claymore. Uh, so I think when I power this up, I might have to have some safety glasses on. Um, it made a hell of a bang and sprayed plastic everywhere. Quite interesting. Anyway, so I'm not going to uh, to labour anymore. Um, this is just more of an update on what the current thinking is and uh, the approach I want to take to making this up. Um, and like I say, hopefully over the next couple of weeks we'll have a chance uh, in and around trips to uh, to start to solder it up and then have a bit of a play. Anyway, I'll say 73s, and um, look forward to catching up with you very shortly. Cheers all.